I've really been into biking recently. Actually, also really into running, walking, driving, reading, but mainly biking. When I get on the bike, tie my hair up, take a deep breath, and then another, press go, I just go. It's like all the jumbled up mess and noise in my head stops for a little. My mind is focused on one goal. My breathing is so loud that it silences my thoughts. My legs hurt so bad. It masks any other stress or pain I have. I find that I'm so focused, yet so distracted. In all this sweat and chaos and heat, I find that I'm extremely at peace. I find that even when my body is doing a million things, I feel that that's when my mind is at its calmest. It can finally stop overthinking. It can stop remembering and reminiscing and stressing and trying to figure it all out. I can stop overanalyzing my body, that stupid thing I said, the dumb comment I made in class, the extra three donuts that I ate that really don't matter, but I make it matter. The awkward social interactions, how lost I feel, because when I'm focused on biking for that time, I know exactly who I am, what my goal is, and how achievable it is. I'm finally in control of my own success. I don't know. I guess I find peace from running away. It's because it's easier to run than to sit in discomfort. It's easier to run than to sit by myself, to confront myself, to actually be there for myself. It's easier for a little. But then I remember, I'm literally just running in place. Hi, welcome back. Today, we're going to run away together for a little. Back to the past, back to the summer, run into my mind, my thoughts, and have a little heart to heart. I always knew the story I wanted to live. I had this perfect picture in my head, this ideal timeline of major events already pre-written, the perfect job, family, partner, goals, and I have been so focused on going through life trying to mold myself to fit the story instead of allowing my own story to mold me. That meant never being happy unless it's exactly what I thought happiness meant, as in having the perfect body, the perfect hair, Instagram pictures, attention from boys, the perfect friend group, being liked by everyone. That was happiness in my head, and I wasn't gonna let myself be happy unless I had exactly that. I lived to make that story real, instead of really just living, and realizing that hit home. Because I've been doing this all my life, and every aspect of what makes me me. In school, it was always about getting that grade, because that's what made me a good student. But I was never happy because I never took the time to learn what I loved, I just learned how to do well. There was a drafted idea of what made up a perfect, acceptable, beautiful body. After my waist was small enough, I now need a bigger butt, then I needed to dye my hair, and then I needed to shrink my calves, but I was so focused on changing, I never took the time to actually see how resilient and loving my body was to me the entire time. I spent my life chasing for relationships because that's how I measured my work. I was so focused on making sure that people loved me. I forgot that I actually had to love myself too so that I could know how I wanted and deserved to be loved. Mm, that's fabulous. Mm, mm. <laughs> Chill, my own. Yes. I've never been me. I've never asked myself what I want. I never saw that maybe my story doesn't have to be like everyone else. There's actually like so many apples. That I didn't have to just fill in the blanks. That maybe the sentences and chapters and problems in my story were unique to me and that was okay. I thought my job was to copy the perfect story, the perfect body, and live happily ever after. We all have an ideal version of ourselves. But when we fixate so much on this one path, this one dream, this one idea of success and happiness, we're closing ourselves off to the potential of all the other beautiful stories and lives that could be so much more than this one dream. But we would just never know. So don't forget that your story isn't actually written. Your journey is really yours to write. What is healing? Good freaking question. Wow. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. Yeah, mmm. Oh, mm. Damn. Sushi is here. No one cares. Everyone's just. Ah, sushi is here. Mmm. Honey. Mm. That's so good. I feel like I've been trying to heal every day for the past 20 years and I thought I had healed. Why does it still hurt? Why am I still upset? Why does it still ache a little? Even though you are stronger, it doesn't mean you've truly moved on or allowed yourself oh, to accept that's it. that's so good. In the micro. Healing, I think is a lifetime thing. I genuinely thought because I gained the weight, I was healed. Because I no longer overexercised, I had a healthy relationship with the gym. Because I went to therapy, I knew everything about myself. And maybe because all these people look up to me, it meant I was finally mature and got my shit straightened out. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but mm, I have no idea what I'm doing. Thank you.
Oh yeah. I have no idea what I need and I have no idea what's gonna happen. I do not feel happy and good every day and I'm healing the ways that I know how and that's the best I can do. So what is healing? Chocolate for breakfast. For me, it's catching myself panicking and just taking one minute, five minutes, two hours to just breathe, cry, do yoga, and stop. Healing for me is reading alone, away from everyone. Healing for me is maybe not doing the homework so I can spend time with myself. Healing is blocking and deleting pictures and throwing away his sweaters. Healing is eating breakfast even after a night out. Healing is giving yourself permission to feel things. Wow. Wow. Yeah, it looks really good. Wow. Mmm. 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 Legit. Healing is holding my own hand, buying myself snacks, treating myself to dinner, being that person for me. More chocolate. Yeah, maybe healing is just holding my own hand. It's an everyday thing. It's working on yourself because you think you're worth it. It's picking yourself because you're all you have. It's sitting with yourself because you need to learn about yourself. Ketchup flavored Doritos. I don't know. I really don't. And it's scary how lost I am. But I'm proud of myself because I know it'll make sense one day, and I know I'll find my way. We always do. You see, I've never labeled myself as a procrastinator. The opposite, really. I finished every task as quickly as possible, got ahead in homework, did all the extra handouts. I never left things until the last minute. So I thought the term procrastinator was far from me. But I'm a big, chunky liar. Yes, the chunkiest. I'm going in. I'm going in. And he's like, no, you gotta, no, you gotta go really in. Like, he's like, I'm in my element. What do you rate the bread out of ten? Oh my god! Look at beauty. Look at gold. I've never had better bread. <laughs> To procrastinate is to delay something that needs to be done. And that is literally what I've been doing my whole life. Not in school or work, but with me. With facing my feelings, my pain, my weaknesses, working on my own fears, and my inability to be enough for myself. I've procrastinated by always hyper-focusing on something else. Creating irrational problems and blowing them up in my head. Getting so caught up in the little things. Distractions. I've definitely been guilty for resisting change, for obsessing over the past, and maybe even craving sadness. I think they call that self-sabotage. <laughs> I think I've always thought that a good life was equal to a comfortable one. One without pain or insecurity, one that I know I can predict. This is so crazy, I'm literally so excited. I've never been excited, more excited about anything in my entire life. That's why I always ran back to the same people I knew were wrong for me. Why I fell into the same old habits around food. Why I run instead of face my problems. I don't know, I want comfort, don't we all? So I guess trying to overcome this resistance means shifting your perception of comfort. It's like playing would you rather. Would you rather be comfortable now and miserable later or uncomfortable now but happier tomorrow? I don't know, maybe I had to focus on the discomfort that I would face if I didn't do the thing in front of me. If I didn't face myself instead of the discomfort I would feel if I did. Like if I don't start to eat, maybe I would feel in control but my illness would control me more and more. Oh, I broke both. So annoying. If I don't start my project today, maybe I won't have to do my research tonight, but I will be stressed out of my mind tomorrow. If I don't start focusing on loving myself, yeah, I may not have to dig deep into my scariest fears and thoughts, but when will I ever learn to accept love from anyone then? If I don't begin today, then when? Yeah, so if I don't stop running, how will I ever learn how to stop? I think running was just easier than facing reality. I kind of never really faced anything or anyone, and that includes myself. When we can't accept reality, we can't grow. Oh my god, that looks insane. Oh my god, that's crazy. Oh my god, that's crazy. Oh, oh, so fire. I've never been more content in my whole life. Maybe if I changed my hair and got a better wardrobe. Maybe if I just lost a couple more pounds. Maybe if I just became more successful, made more money. Maybe if I acted more like her. Maybe if I was her, I'd be happy. That's a monologue I replay to myself inside my head some days. What a terrible way to live trying to be someone else to impress everyone else while never being myself. I gave my own power away. I gave it away to social media, my successes, my body, boys, and the love they didn't give me, validation from my parents. I gave it all away, okay? Your power is you, and you are your power, so you can't really be yourself if you give yourself to someone or something else. We all have power, but sometimes, like me, you just have to take it back and own it. 
I just wanted to be one thing, a girl that someone wanted. I worked hard, I gave up a lot of things like food, cookies, donuts, peanut butter, cereal, and prioritized it over anything. I wanted to be smart, but not too smart. Strong, but not too independent. Girly, but not too clingy. Mm. Curvy, but not curvy in the wrong places. Be caring, be kind, be funny, but don't show your emotions. Trying to be that girl, almost killed me. I shrank myself till I was so sick, but still thought it was worth it. I thought I needed to be small in order to be loved. It's weird how we give bits of our power away without even knowing it. And after all these years, like several, like actually almost a decade, I now see this perfect me I have visualized. It was never real. It was never me. It was never about Good looking job. like someone else or owning the right clothes or eating the perfect <laughs> diet because none of that actually mattered. None of it mattered because the whole time I wasn't chasing that. I was chasing for my own acceptance. I starved myself empty, chased guys until my heart was broken, worked day and night for grades and jobs until I was burnt to the ground. I cried rivers, never feeling enough. And now, now I'm just left with just me. Oh, my plate. Oh, there's your plate. Non-alcohol. <laughs> Sensitive, vulnerable, intense, annoying, stressed out, overthinking, opinionated, feeling, independent, hurt, feminine, and masculine me. Just all of me. Maybe a little bit broken, but very much me. I'm done adjusting and changing and accommodating and measuring and comparing. I'm done. I'm just me and I need to accept that before I can expect others to. Yeah, I didn't realize that the thing that was actually holding me back from being perfect was simply the idea that I wasn't. And you base your validation, your love, your sense of happiness, your self-esteem on anything outside of yourself, you lose your power. So, at the end of the day, I just want to be one thing. Not a girl that someone else wants, but a girl that I want to be. And I am her. I just forget it a lot. <laughs> one thing that I've learned is no one is actually ever ready. You just gotta jump sometimes, let go, move on, and I guess it's that time for me. It's time to let go of the shame of my body and be comfortable with my shape. I'm letting go of the shame of feeling like I don't deserve the opportunities or support that I have. The shame I have for not looking like an influencer or thinking like a YouTuber or being creative enough to be a creator. The shame I have for not being able to love others as much as I wish or love myself as much as I should. I need to let this shame go. Instead, maybe let's take this shame and turn it into pride. I'm proud that I ate breakfast today. I'm proud of the battles that I've fought in my mind even though I haven't won all of them yet. I'm proud that I know winning means maybe just never giving up. I'm proud I ate three donuts because I felt like. I'm proud that I can admit I do need help and support and reassurance and I'm not ashamed of that. I'm proud that I allow myself to be vulnerable enough to be broken. Please don't go. I'm proud of my voiceovers, no matter how cheesy or cringy or too deep they are. This is me, and that is my power. So, remember yours. And, do nothing with me. and after saying all of that, running doesn't actually have to be a bad thing. You can't force a wound to heal. You can't force your mind to think something it doesn't know. You can't force your body to change. You can't change how your heart feels knowing that it won't ever be the same. But you can change the way you allow these things to hurt you. The way you treat yourself and think to yourself in moments like these. When my mind is racing and my heart is heavy and I can feel myself losing control, when my mind needs rest, I honor it. I have to focus my energy somewhere else. This has really changed the game for me. This is my new baby, Nordic Track Commercial S22i Studio Cycle. It transports me to wherever I want to go, biking on the beach, the city, the desert, the mountains. You can choose outdoor or studio workouts, interval or endurance, specific trainers, live workouts. The options are actually endless. Yeah, the fact that these are world-class personal trainers is, you know, pretty cool. But the iFit trainer automatically adjusts the resistance and incline of your machine in the moment during your workout. And something that I also love is that the iFit library that has on and off machine workouts have strength training, yoga, boot camp, and a mind series that focuses on meditation and mental health, which was made for me. This has been my healthy escape. And it reminds me of how strong I am, how I can control these moments of stress. We are so strong and we forget that so often. Nordic Track has an amazing sale going on right now, so click the link in my description to get a Nordic Track machine of your own. I'm not gonna lie, sometimes I feel like I'm losing at this thing. This life thing, this school thing, this self-love thing. Sometimes I don't even want to try, but why did I even make it a competition? There's no win or lose, there's just me. Mm. This life is uniquely yours. Your story is not comparable to anyone else's. Yes, there are very smart people, very beautiful people, very charismatic, wealthy, happy, healthy, stronger, taller, hardworking, more artistic, 
people, but that doesn't take away from what you have and what you offer. So take it slow, be gentle with your journey, there's no rush, and you're not losing just because you feel lost. You're not losing just because you're sad, you're not losing just because you've lost parts of you. I think that all comes with just being human, it comes with growth. All this, the pain, the frustration, the disappointment, the trying and trying and being so close to giving up, that is all part of it. It's what makes it worth it when you think about it. We only know success because we've struggled. We only know hope because the world has proven our doubts wrong. Mm. I only know I will be okay because all the other times I thought I would never recover from, when I ate that extra bag of chips last week, I was okay. When I got my heart broken, I was okay. When I was at the depths of my eating disorder, I am now still okay. I'm alive and I did recover. I thought my body, my weight, food, and the scale would control me. So insane. I took my power back. I thought social media would always be the thing that ruined my life. And isn't it beautiful? that it is the exact thing that saved me. So even when I'm losing, I guess I've already won. Oh, that's so good. Mm. Wins are the things I do for me, that are hard, that no one sees, but are for me and my own growth. When I wake up some mornings and feel my body's resisting the gym, I will rest, that's a win. When I listen to my cravings and push past the guilt, that's a win. When I leave half of my to-do list undone to hang out with family, when I add butter to my bread, when I build up the courage to talk to someone new, these are all little, silent, everyday wins. And we should be proud of them. Aww. It's never a loss. What we lose was never meant to be ours. Everything we lose, everyone, every opportunity is opening up space for what we actually deserve. That's how you should look at it. That's how you make your losses your wins. The fact that when I give up on things and people give up on me and I do not call that a tragedy, but instead an opportunity, that is freaking gross. There's no one who's perfectly healed, whose scars are no longer a part of them. I think I figured out now that life is a process of getting hurt and healing, suffering and healing, losing and healing, breaking and breaking and breaking and healing. But each time, each break, each hit, every wound makes you stronger, better preps you for the next one, which there will be, but it doesn't have to be the end of the world if you don't make it. These breaks, they help you see that you are capable of this healing and you can do this thing, this thing you know, called life. Healed people heal people. So focus on your healing first. Everything you need is within you, even if you don't realize it yet. What you have to know is that suffering is refusing to accept what is. So healing is really just letting yourself feel. So at some point, you're going to have to hop off that bike, be honest with yourself and stop running. Pain and loss, they're scary but we have to feel them in order to fully feel happiness and gratitude. Change and disappointment, they're uncomfortable, but we have to welcome these chances of failure to ever become better versions of ourselves. Food and weight can be terrifying, but without trying to build a healthy relationship with both, we can never fully accept ourselves. One step forward is always better than just running in place. I am scared out of my mind. But don't let fear deprive you of the person you deserve to be. I love you guys. Be gentle with yourselves today. Go tell your friends you love them. Go hug your parents. Go eat your favorite food. And take care of yourselves. See you soon.